a mess. A Come mess. on in. I'm your neighborhood friendly black girl, Amber. And I'm Ben. And today y'all are in for a very special treat because I have my friend, but also host, stylist, icon, my stylist, y'all. I'm not my a stylist. stylist. Uh, former stylist. I'm, uh, I was never a stylist. Icon, Ryan Mitchell, the slay god <laughs> is in the building. Welcome to the show, Ryan. I am so honored to be here. You tell... You tell Amber that you work in fashion once, and she's automatically <laughs> giving you a stylist. You're a stylist for life. I, How can you not see that? Look at you. I actually didn't know you worked in fashion. I did. I, I was. I worked in like fashion PR for a while, and I, I did some editorial work, and so yeah. I was at Fashion Week. I was doing shows. I worked. Wait, Fashion Week in Paris? No, in New York. You know they got like Fashion yeah. Month. In oh New yeah, York, yeah, yeah. Paris, Milan. Oh yeah. dang! Teach us, teach us. So you were a stylist? No. <laughs> So it's you're an artist. Stylist. Can you at least say I'm an artist? <laughs> and my canvas. What did you go to school for? I I mean, so I mean, I didn't finish school, but I was going to school for like communications and like PR as a minor. Okay. I did want to be a publicist. Like I wanted to be Kelly Catrone meets Andre Leon Talley. If you're familiar, well, if you watch The Hills, you would know who Kelly Catrone is. Because right. She was like like Lauren Conrad's like. Um, mentor, People's Revolution. I always was like, that's the goal. Um, well, you do. I didn't know any things. of those people you just mentioned. See, uh, where <laughs> am I at? I think I'm security. <laughs> exactly. Where am I at? Exactly. I'm a fly on the wall. Uh, yes, I love the I love the show. You, you love know, the this, jingle. The show is great. Y'all are amazing, and I'm just happy to call you both friends. So, r what you do now is you are a host. I guess you are. That is your full time. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so, but you're also an influencer as well. Like you're am going. I, so that's the thing. Am I an influencer? I feel like I am. Yes. Amber told me that you identify as an influencer. Oh, so yes. she said you are a stylist. I didn't say it like that. And an influencer. My new pronouns are that influencer. Part. Yeah, well, here's the thing about it, Ryan. This is the question because I used to say like, "Am I really an actor?" Da 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 da. But this is the question. Yeah. Have you ever been paid to make content? on your page yes then baby you an influence <laughs> true true but i think i the way that i label influence like being an influencer is like someone who is like around the clock like i would label y'all as like influencers yeah, for yeah. sure right yes but you i don't part time influencer. i know but i just don't feel like i do it enough right and then like also i think it comes with a certain aesthetic um, Which like, you have. I have a really... No, I mean, but like online, like a, the digital footprint, mm. I think it looks a certain way. And like, it's all stylized. I'm like, my photos, when I take photos, they will look good. But like, I'm not planning out what my grid looks like or what photo comes next to match. Neither are we. Like, I'm like, have I'm you not, seen my grid? Neither no, are we. No, but I feel like there are great some... intro. This is the great intro yeah, so, to our first segment. Which is <laughs> hashtag, hashtag influence, in influence, which is why you're here. So you think that our grid is like, planned to the nines well, aesthetically I don't, well it's different it's different for y'all because y'all shoot nothing but videos right yeah. mm -hmm. so like that's a little bit different but if I like think about like lifestyle like fashion influencers okay. like that is all like my friend Archie will like literally like plan out his photo shoots and wow, like yeah. takes a camera everywhere with him like he's the content god and I'm like that's an influencer, right? His goal yeah. is to like be in the realms of like a Kim Kardashian and kind of have that empire that started off one way and then landed into like this everything, right? Like for me, I'd never really looked at myself like that. I just so happened to have really great style. Period. And I do really good work like professionally. Yeah. I've I never really thought about me as an influencer. I've never seen you not looking hot. Oh, thank you. You know, like I whenever you're... you don't say it enough, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Like I don't, I don't hear it enough. Like, like sometimes you see people coming out in like sweatpants, but like we'll be out just like at your house, <laughs> and you'll be coming Give out ready. Up. You will look the nicest lounging, uh, and that would be me. That would be like wedding wear for me. <laughs> so like you are too, right? for me, you're I love a fashion your t shirt. By the way, oh yeah, this is very cute. This color is really nice on you. I'm just yeah. putting this out there. And tell Ryan how, about how you had an attitude on the phone with the stylist uh, an, an hour ago. Uh, yeah, well, she won. She preferred some black pants that um, were a little too snug for me. So I, I made a joke about like skinny jeans. Like she would yeah, wear. and I was like, uh, I made a joke that they sounded sarcastic. Jeans. They just don't fit no more, <laughs> and that's okay. 
we all got a little. Uh, I was like, we all she, got a little wealthier and curvier <laughs> during the pandemic. <laughs> But yeah. she was like, are they killing you or are they just really like... <laughs> can, I mean, sometimes can, if you want to look good, you're not supposed to be able to like breathe or walk. Right. That's insane. Thank like, there's some that things is that fucking right insane. Moment, right. You have to kind of push through because the look is so good that like once you get the compliments, once everyone like looks at you and like, wow, I really like that. You'll be like, oh, great. This was so worth the pain. It's no longer I uncomfortable. Have, no, I've literally worn shoes where I was in so much pain that my, like, my feet were swollen. But I was like... That's the I hustle. Served. That's I served. That's the grind. That's four the plus hustle. four. I ate. <laughs> Ryan, please do this right now. Explain to Ben, because, you know, we're still, we've only been in L.A. for a year. Yes. I'm so grateful that you were one of my friends when I got here because you give me the, like, yes, no, go. Mm -hmm. So explain to Ben how important it is to work these events and show up presenting your best self on the fashion end of things. Well, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think that was something I learned not as soon as I moved out here because I didn't have the money to. Like, I remember going to events and just being like, okay, I'm just going to be wearing some of the things I've owned for like maybe like six, ten years before because I couldn't go out and buy anything because it was either you're going to pay your rent or <laughs> you either going to eat. And so it was like there was a lot of times when I first moved out of here that I didn't, I felt a little bit out of place because mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was showing mm -hmm. up in the ways I was doing, especially when I was working in fashion when I first moved out here, right? Like you have to present a certain way you have to look a certain way but like i don't i mean i will say this i don't think fashion it's not really about it's about how you wear it you can't like right. i mean realistically like i know it's people say like oh it's a you don't want to wear the don't let the clothes wear you you got to wear the clothes right right um but I, I really think it's about your personal style, like whatever you want to wear. Like I genuinely wear whatever I want to wear, and I did not. Mm -hmm. And I, if you saw like high school photos of me or elementary school, I was wearing hoodies all the time. Like I was, yeah. I mean, Ben, I was wearing what you were wearing. If I'm being honest, but I also was a closeted <laughs> Southern boy who was just trying to make it through. I was wearing American Eagle or like Hollister. Yeah, you're just. I just want to blend. I just yeah, blend. I was just. Like, Whereas like, here, it's like no. I feel, I'm I feel like I just got burned. <laughs> You know, Ben, I was kind of looking like you before I knew who I was. That's well, what so I was saying. I, but I, I, yeah, I see how that came off. But yeah, I see that. Yeah, but I, but no, I think I, I don't really, I don't, I don't need people to like if as long as you feel good, you're great. Like right. you're like walk the room, own it, and like people will see like that shine in you, right? Like and going to these events, if you are like confident enough to know that you're supposed to be there and you're not putting on or acting like the fake LA that a lot of people assume that you have to be. Mm. Right. Um, I think that's what the switch is. Because for me, when I entered into spaces, I wasn't, I don't know, I just wasn't like, no one phased me. I came from the right. South. I felt like I experienced life. And I feel like a lot of people were trying to perform exactly. how they were supposed to be. And I they was, were trying I to, want to do They were that. trying to show the shine without any heart. Exactly. And I'm like, I don't need to do that. I don't want to do that. And I just never did that. I feel like you know, I've always been who I am. You know, I like your concept of like, you know, going out to show the shine because a penny can be really shiny, but it's still just a penny, you know? Yes. So yes. for me, I don't care about the shine as long as, you know... I and thrifting the, is such just, a huge part too. Like I yeah, used to thrift thrifting. all the time. I can, we can thrift, and it can be but your thrifting, personal thrifting style. Thrifting takes time. You know it what does. I mean? It can be your personal style. I just don't want you to wear something that literally has a hole in it. You know, we we were at now, we were at gotta, ground zero with the shit. You do have to. There's a time and a place for, for and whole, we are going for out somewhere. Like if we're going out to like when we went to like the comedy thing, if yes, we're like yes. you know. We got to You got to show up just a little bit, right? Yeah, no, I. It can be you. I you understand that really, now. Really yeah. make it you, you. It's like going to a restaurant. You can. There's some places you can't just show up in a t-shirt and some shorts, but other places you can. So one of the places that I found out recently, there's a restaurant that just opened in L.A. It's a nude restaurant, and ever everybody goes and dines in the nude. And so this literally sounds that? like yeah. my favorite place. It's in LA. Look it up. LA nude restaurant. It just I don't want it, it opened and it, like You're not trying to do that? I don't want it's like it. a dinner That's too LA. I don't want anything near my tapas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to be topless near my tapas. Yes. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. You know, I'm kind of I, I'll be honest, my interest is peaked. Really? I'm, I'm yeah. actually yeah. Well, topless and tapas sounds like a whole fun vibe. <laughs> yeah. Topless and Tapas moment. sounds like a great strip club. Sign I, me up. I grew up in a naked house. Really? Everybody, everybody wasn't butt naked, but like we saw my mama's titties and 
vagina See, on I a regular did. basis. My, my, or I could walk around in a bra or something if I'm hurrying to get dressed. But yeah. I have friends that are like, girl, my, my family never saw me in a bra. Like, that's why. No. I, so, I mean, I think I may have accidentally saw my mom's boobs, but it was like so like traumatizing. Like jarring, I was like, oh, yeah. God, I can't. Oh, my um, gosh. That's so funny. Yeah. My mom I was, was like, I had everybody that. in this motherfucker. Like, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I feel like I grew up in a very conservative household yeah. except for politics. But oh, everything yeah. else was like very conservative, like from well, that's, that's about like black sex, church, right? Yeah, yeah, it was just traditional in all the ways, which is really interesting when you think about like black people at its core. Like we are very traditional people, right? Yeah. And so it's it's one of those things where I'm like, I I mean, even if I close the door, like my bedroom door, my mom would be like, "Who's closing doors up in this house?" <laughs> like I'm not allowed to. Even when I got grown and I moved out and I would go back to my mom's place, it literally took like. I think maybe until I went back home 2021 for, no, no, I went back home last year for Thanksgiving. That was the first time I was able to close the door, like privacy wise. And I'm what? Just to sleep? 29. Yeah. Just to, you know what? This is a great segue yeah. into our next segment, Imperfect Parent, where we talk about parenting and how our parents disappointed us a couple of times. Scarred us? Yes. Therapy? Yeah. <laughs> so you know what? It's funny because... Ben and I had been dating for a while, but but my parents were like that too. It's like y'all can't just be sleeping in the same room, even though I'm like, you know, we live together in yeah. Chicago. Like they only mm-hmm. kind of just got comfortable with that, you know, a year or so into our marriage. And I married? would just do oh, it because you're married. Yes. Well, because yeah. We're now married. now we can sleep in the same room because we're married. Yeah, but when we were like, I was like, Mom, I'm engaged to him. We've been together four years. She's like, mm, mm. like that's yours. That's his. Yeah. So Very I just. Traditional. Yes, but what, were what, they think, it? what were they going to think that y'all were just going to like have an orgy in the room? I, I mean, which we probably would have, but like <laughs> we, we, we've been living together. Okay, so maybe you, Mama was right. You mama know knows we lived to, or when you come visit us in Chicago, you know that we're going to sleep in the same bed. But it's something about when we go home, we still become like is, little kids. Is it okay to have sex in your parents' house when you bring someone home? Like, is that or is that is are people okay with that? I'm asking, like in general. I don't know, actually, because, well, to be honest, I'm a, I feel like I'm a different situation because, like, me and my mom's relationship is just now kind of coming to mm-hmm. a space where we're, like, able, she's fully able to, like, in the space to understand me and open to mm-hmm. understanding all aspects of me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we've had conversations about my pronouns and we've had conversations about me being queer, but after for a while there, there was all these moments where I felt like I was coming out to her every five seconds, right? Like, <laughs> we're, we're constantly pushing them. Yeah, and like reassuring. I've had the same, I, we literally were talking about last week, just having those conversations with our parents and just trying to be like, I'm moving to Chicago. I'm dating this white dude. Yeah. I actually love him and want to marry this white dude. I'm also bisexual. I'm also, so I, I think my parents are at a point where they're like, we have been pushed the furthest that you can possibly push us. <laughs> like, what next? And then <laughs> last week I was like, I got something else to tell yeah. you. Well, I thought, I would think, I guess in my mindset, because I grew up an only child, I would think because you have siblings that your parents, uh, that I think maybe that's the reason why there's so much bandwidth to change. But I think a lot of times now that I'm adult, I understand like, my mom, I was my mom's only guinea pig, if you really think about it, right? Like, yeah. she was only doing what she kind of knew best. And and I think a lot of times, my mom now has reflected about some of the actions or some of the mistakes. Yeah, because their the knee-jerk reaction is to pop off. Most What definitely. was the biggest, the first big thing you told her, and what was her reaction? Um, I mean, to be honest, there was a couple of times... Actually, I've never talked about this. There was a couple of times... Where, like, my mom caught me, like, sexting guys before. Like, and I was, like, probably a teenager. I had no business doing that. But, you know, we're exploring. You yeah. definitely yeah. have um, business doing that. No, but, you know, I, but I, I'm, like, now I think about, like, you know, it's, like, very euphoria. It's, like, you're, like, yeah. I don't want to watch these teenagers have sex. But, like, yes. it's true. But I can't yeah. look away. Yeah. Um, but so my mom just caught me, like, watching porn and things like that. But, like, that was, like, when I was younger and I was, like, I didn't really under- have an understanding of sexuality. I was just kind of, like, doing what I felt. Right? But when I first came out to my mom and it was... I graduated high school when I was 16, and I was already kind of starting college right then. You graduated high school at 16? Yeah, I graduated high school when I was 16, and then I started college that following, like, semester. And so I was, like, turning 17 over the summer, and I was still so young. Like, and so I did a couple of semesters at home. I stayed at home. My mom was like, okay, you got to at least turn 18 before you can stay on campus. So when I was able to move on campus and I got my first boyfriend, I, like, officially, like, came out to my mom. Um, which was felt like the third time of me coming out at that point. <laughs> what but did what, the conversation go like with the sexting? 
Oh, that was awful. Oh my god, it was like it was. It was like immediate discipline. Oh no, god, co- no a, conversation. It was immediate discipline. It was it was taking the phone. It was a uh, you know saying things that probably she should not have said, like saying slurs and asking me if I was you know all these things, but saying it in a very aggressive manner, right? And I think at that time, context is like. You know, I think families go through mental health issues, and my mom most definitely had mental health issues, like, growing up. And Yeah, we're not here to vilify her. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, I, I've, I've, I've been able to re- just recently find a lot of grace and space for how she either reacts to certain, certain things or how she's... Um, how she's showing up because she's a great mother. I mean, she gave me everything I wanted, mm-hmm. right? I never wanted for anything. Um, but besides her um, phone to sex, and, the, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Honey, did she see like a dick pic or anything? Or that, what year was that? I guess oh, that was that was before the I mean, year. Of the I, had dick a, pic, I had a kid. Yeah. I mean, I had a I had all the sidekicks. I was like, yes. I mean, my first <laughs> cell phone I had when I was in the fifth grade. Oh, oh wow. period. Yeah, like so. My, I, I, mean, I mean, I was a lot of people said I was spoiled. Like, I mean, and granted, when you think about it, my like, I, I think my mom was like really over like compensating. So when she yeah. found out she, she was, was trying to, you I know, was see a what whore. was up. Yes. I was a whore. And still am. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, our parents were the first ones that had to deal with that whole tech uh, type of panic around yeah. how to appropriately monitor like kids on phones. Now there's like yeah. there's apps that you can check in. There's ways to like monitor it. People are like you know put put caps on it. So it's a hard thing to do. I no, mean, it is, and especially yeah. if you've never dealt with like like my mom. Literally, she's told me that she's never had any queer friends. Like the only thing mm-hmm. that she was educated about queerness was through the HIV qu- crisis. Exactly. And like, yeah. And and losing people or had people who lost you know family members because of it and so like that was attached to gayness and that was a, like that's mm. your only way if you're gay yeah, that's what's going to happen to you right so there was a there was and a it's pen, god's judgment yeah. yeah it's a like and so there was a, there and plus it didn't hurt that she was super religious and like mm-hmm. the mom yeah. family was super religious but i mean we're in a better place now i mean i've i feel like i at this point, she don't pay no bills. I have my right. own life. It's like they can feel that way, but it's like, okay, how does uh, that affect my day to day? I'm able. It, I'm able I wish to. It was I'm though. able to. I was. A, I've been able to create boundaries around what our relationship looks like forward, yeah. right? And I have to. I've. I've been working through so many things of being like, I have to give her the space to. If she's actually trying, I need to let her try because if I cut her off immediately, mm. I don't want her to give up. You know, yeah. I don't want her to just be like, well, fuck yes. it. Yes, we know can't beat them over the head with it. Yeah. Because we're also learning new things about ourselves. For sure. In these, like, new sort of shedding of our former skin into our, our newness. Because I remember my mom actually recently showed me a journal when I went home of, like, goals I want to accomplish and things I never want to happen to me, right? Mm. And the top of my list, because I knew I was, like, a young kid that liked girls and boys, I, I was like, why is my number one thing on this list don't get A? And it's because Mm. a young 14 year old me was like, I know this thing about myself, but the only thing I know about this thing is the danger associated with it. Even though Mm. I'm like, (laughs) you know, a little girl and and whatever, which obviously women can still get AIDS. But at the time it was like a big gay men was the only thing. So I just remember my own internalized homophobia was showing up. In, in my own journals in that way. So it's like, we also just learned pronouns. Yeah. Like uh, us, the millennials, a little bit. So then we have to like, learn them, see how we feel about them, try them on or not. Well, that's literally what yes. I just did. I mean, right. I, I mean, I feel like all last year I was... I was I kept being thrown into spaces where people were identifying me as like femme or you know using they them pronouns for me and I was like whoa first of all you like I didn't even say it. I never once said that like, that was too one. liberal this no, is I mean it was it, too it's not even that but it just old. it felt like because I think people um it really have exterior judgments where if they see you on a hill or they see you wearing something yeah. or they see you paint your nails, like they ought to, are, I mean, to be honest, you know, my voice is up in the sopranos. <laughs> in I the love row. your voice. <laughs> it's so, so like, great. Voice. Thank you. I mean, but I think a lot of times, you know, people, and to be honest, like that's always been kind of like a, um, what do they call it? Like um, something you don't like, like a Achilles heel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where it's one of those things where I've never really, enjoyed my voice because I always felt like, oh, it's all these different things. So when people were calling me they, them, or saying I was femme identifying, I really was like kind of getting offended by it, but Mm. never saying anything about it because I was like, well, why am I getting a reaction? I had to literally interrogate like, okay, 
what 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 do you feel about masculinity and also what do you feel do you even identify with masculinity do you identify with he and pronouns and i mean i was able to figure out that i'm like non-binary but i still like go by he they pronouns but i i needed to do the work for myself versus people just telling me and like me being a public figure not feeling comfortable with telling them no i don't i don't identify with them or whatever and i also felt like it it was something to do with genitals. I had this like interesting mm. like connection to that, but I've I've had to unpack a lot of that because it's not about it's not about that, right? It's it's not about not experiencing body dysmorphia. It's like all these other things that I feel like I had to figure out for myself. Um, you are a public figure, which we haven't really talked about this. I realized like, oh no, you are a host. And talking about on the section of imperfect parent, uh does your mom like understand what you do? And so for, for context, <laughs> like, so Ryan has hosted events for Essence. You've interviewed, uh, you know, icons, right? Like, like huge, huge icons. Uh, who, what, tell us some of the people you've interviewed. Yeah. So, um, I, Saucy, I'm a host at MTV. I've, I've done, um, I've host, I mean, I've interviewed everyone from Billy Porter to Lizzo, to Demi Lovato, to Paris Hilton, to, um, I've been interviewed by Tamron Hall. Um, so yeah, I've done, I've done some Kiki yeah. Palmer. Yeah. yeah. I've talked, I've to, I've talked yeah. to our fans. You got to see Kiki IRL. Yeah, I talked to our Kiki fans. Kiki was like, I will give you 30 minutes on Zoom, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you got to hug her. Touch her in the flesh. <laughs> you were matching? Yes. Yo, what, uh, did y'all plan that? No, we did not. It was a very you, serendipitous moment. You uh, hosted um, We Hope Pride, which yes. was really great. You got Third to introduce year. You got to introduce uh, some wonderful musicians. Yeah, Grace Jones, <laughs> uh, yeah. Jesse Ware. Um, I mean, it's been amazing. I've been, I've been able to. Who else is headline? I've Saucy Santana's been there. Orville like, Peck was there. Yeah, the Over- WeHo because we we went. Yes, to, to see you yeah, yeah. That's the first it, time I got to see you in action. You were great. Awesome. No, not a dead moment. It's it's just as exciting to watch you in your element yeah. as it is to watch any of those artists. It really is. Well, it's thank like you. this you know how when you see somebody doing something like this person was meant to do this. Thank you. Especially cuz at one point Grace Jones was like take it forever. So you also had <laughs> so, to like, improvise. <laughs> yeah. I was like honestly Ryan is so, doing like a nice a nice <laughs> job of keeping us entertained. What, what am real. I uh, one of my favorite things about queer queer representation. Do you, do you identify as queer? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is After that all this talk about is that, sex thing, boy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's like, ah, actually, I'm straight. I'm uh, cis hat and, black. And, and, and what are your pronouns? He they. He they. Uh, so for me, it's. I love seeing representation, especially queer representation, where it's not about like being queer. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you're a host. This is your job. Or being sad. Or, or being We've sad. That. You see that all the time. So your representation is you're just existing and you don't have to do a queer thing, whatever that means. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, I think that's be- I think that's because I literally didn't come out here to be a host. I yeah fell into this world Mm. and I had people who were like championing me to like do this work but I I I had this imposter syndrome thinking like it was I I never saw anyone like me I didn't Mm. hear anyone who sounded like me look like me when I would do carpets people like I was standing next to KTLA and they had full-on producers and it was like a whole thing and I just felt out of like I wasn't supposed to be there Mm. and so it's it's really just now kind of gotten me to the space where, I mean, I didn't want to be labeled as like a journalist or a host because I'm like, people went to school. People went to like, you know, classes out here. And, and you went to school work. to become a stylist. <laughs> no, I did not. You went to school for communications. <laughs> yeah, for, 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 for like you fashion. Away because yeah. you're like, I didn't finish. I'm sorry. That It's a running bit. I'm going to keep <laughs> I'm going to keep going on onto that. So you <laughs> you suffer from imposter syndrome. Yeah. But I think you're very good at what you do. Do you... Uh, do you ex- how does how do you explain this to your mom? Does it, like your mom know like oh so I'm a host. A, this is what I do. For a while, I was keeping every all my work very separate. Like I was yeah. not letting her wow. know, like anything. Like mm-hmm. I was on radio for like three years before she even knew I was on radio. What? And so when she came, I've been in LA for eight years. She came probably like year six for the first time, and I was able to take her to like the radio station, and she was like able to like sit behind the board, and I took her around the studio and saw. Like she was able to see everything, and that was like the first time where I, I I feel like I physically saw her take a deep breath because she was like, "Oh, he's good. Like he's yeah. he's not worried about things." And like the ways that I think 
I had to prove so much. I, a lot of my career has been fueled basically like proving like, hey, I'm not going back home. I'm here to Can't do something. Go back home. You're not, you're not yeah, heading back like, to Nashville or yeah, this North is it. Carolina. <laughs> this is literally it. And so it's, um, yeah, my mom knows now. Like she texted me and was like, oh my God, are you, are you doing anything for the like VMAs or MTV coming up soon? I was like, so she understands now, but like, she doesn't really get the extent of it, I don't think. Because I also haven't really given her that much. Like, I don't tell her I'm, I'm hosting Pride. Like, I haven't... Because I, I there's some pieces of the, I, my identity. I'm like, okay, I don't know if she's ready to, like, take that on yet. Because I don't know if she would... I mean, she's told me before, like, well, are you sure you want to go down the queer path? Because, you know, people back in the as day... As far as hosting or yeah, as far as just, just being? as far as, like, being an identi Existing. identity, right? Like, especially publicly, because there's always been this thing for, like, you know, actors or people in this industry. Like, if you're queer and you're open about it, that was a lot of the mindset. Like, that's a fail. Like, you're, you're never yes. going to be successful. And so, because my entire career has been based off of who I am and my authenticity and, and my queer identity, like... That's something that I'm like, ah, oh, I kind of, I don't know. She'll see it when she sees it, when she comes invited to, you know, when she decides to come to something that I've done. But she's never seen me in action. Yeah, I think I want to empower you to, like, share with her and invite her in and just not, and not have any <laughs> expectation because it really is a a push in thinking for our parents yeah. because I, I feel similarly... I, we have the opposite problem. My mom watches everything and yeah. then tries to give notes. <laughs> She'll do the like, you can't just be telling people about having sex with your husband online or things like that. She's getting a lot better about it. Yeah. But I just had to sit her down one day and say like, the content is not changing. The content is actually the superpower. Yeah. The content cannot change. So, and I've gone back and forth about like, maybe I am oversharing or maybe it's too much or like pe people have seen my entire pregnancy. People have seen my coochie at this point. <laughs> that, I mean, From yeah, the documentary, documentary, yes. They have seen my For coochie. a small <laughs> fee of $5, you can sign up on yes, Patreon. Yeah, right, right. That's all for free. Right, right. 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 Yes. So our parents are from a generation of like, keep up with the Joneses. Make everything look no. Like yeah. it's going perfect. It's Don't true. let everybody in the church know. And so maybe my mom is being confronted with those conversations at Publix and I'm not privy to them. But we have, have to share our, our lives. True. You know, some people are trying to keep up with the Joneses. In our case, we're keeping up with the Grace Joneses. We're setting trends. Right. We're setting, you know, I, 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 we're I introducing. We're, yes, you I actually don't hate that. that. <laughs> I've never thought I was going to be giving a white man a compliment today, but I ain't, you ain't that. You ain't that one. Yeah, most that. people don't wake up thinking, I'm going to give a white man a compliment <laughs> today. They do that. I think maybe more people should. <laughs> what? There was a time when we first started there where I was like, oh my God. <laughs> give white men compliments for, for being funny. Okay, okay, I can do that. Or just being nice. We're, we're good. You know, you remember, there there was know. a time where we were first started White men, their, their egos like, are so tiny. I was like, there is a white person in my bed. Like a whole <laughs> white man. I didn't I didn't send him home like that and they're in it the next day. And well, the he's next like day. a perfect white man. Who? Oh, thank you. Ben, in the, in the case of like Ben who? Like in the, I, I mean he's not per perfect's loaded, right? But like in the sense of like I being think, able to deal with yeah. all the, the the worlds that we're in, like that's a, that's I am a pretty perfect. Probably the greatest white person I know. As far that's as just tall order. I don't understanding know the world. And I have being a an list ally. of favorite white I'm, women. Like I am the greatest. You do? Yeah. Give me top three. I Who's have like, Anne Hathaway, Reese Witherspoon, and um, oh my God, who else? Who else? Who else? Who's the third? Who's my third white woman that I really, really enjoy? Anne Hathaway being versus I would I, I didn't. I see love that Anne Hathaway. Are you called? Are you Ellie Enchanted she's, Princess Diary? Yeah, no, she's very talented. People wanted to deem her to be a bitch, but she was not. She's oh, very you, you've talented, interacted but... with no, I mean uh, I, I like her a lot. Though. Yeah, I'm, I'm obsessed with Anne Hathaway. I think she's a fashion girly. She's everything. Yeah. Uh, I, I so like funny. her, but she I I really feel like she wouldn't be my favorite. I still need the third from you. Oh, oh yeah, what's um, the third? I, oh my god, my third would have to be who. I mean, let's just say Jane Fonda because she's an activist. Icon. You yeah, know? you can't go wrong with Jane Fonda. Yeah, I mean, she literally went on The View and was like, well, maybe somebody should die to <laughs> get our rights. So I'm like, she's kind like, of like, my kind of girl. Like, yes. I'm a murderer or nothing. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, she was, I mean, but she put, she's got the receipts to back up that yes. she's been with the movement. Like, exactly. you can see pictures from the 60s where she was yeah. like out there protesting. Yeah. And, and I'm with it because yeah. it, there is a lot of performativeness right now. So yeah. I'm like, I'm no. going to change, I'm the greatest white man I know. 
uh, because I can't really compete with Jane Fonda. So we'll go with that. Okay. When you say no, you mean that you know this person personally? No, no, I just like, I'm just no the of. greatest. I'm See? literally the best white person there is. Any, anyway, um, this is a great Talking segment. about imperfect parenting. Yes. Well, can Let's... I also say I love Wild? Oh, wild yeah. Is so you. iconic. And like to watch, because I mean, this is the thing. Amber and I will see, like, we live so close to each other and we yeah. barely see each other, but the, I stalk you all online. And right. so I watch <laughs> all of Wild and like I'm like seeing her being able to talk now and like say, like, and I'm like, what is going on? She's 26. I, she I know. Is, well, I actually want to stalk you more, but I, I scroll for like, uh, one second and it's like your 30th birthday we missed like three months ago you don't <laughs> post enough ryan i don't post enough i'm actually that's actually one thing about me that i i tend to i need more content to stock i know and i mean i've had like my team tell me i need to post more and like and your I, friends yeah my the friends I mean, Amber was alive. Even working. amber's been helping like well she was helping me and like i'm like i do work a lot and i'm like the content yeah. of it all just be, it just feels so intense. But I do it's need intense. to do a better job at it. I need to do a better job at it. It's intense. Yeah. What, I'll like what, see what you on knows? like uh, Saucy Santana's page or something like that. <laughs> and it's like, okay. <laughs> not, yeah, not your I'm own like, page. I literally use my Instagram as a resume. Like, yeah. It's always work related or like if I just decide to drop like a, a cute like outfit pic. Yeah. Because it's like a special day. That's fair, fair enough. You're busy. I need to do better. I need to do, I really do need to do better. Maybe if I just keep shaming you, it might work. Because I mean, shame is a great is, way. I, I want to be like more of like a fashion girly and do my you outfits are. and things like that. Yeah, but I'm like, I, I, I want to have an area, a designated area where I, I shoot it. Like the TikTok girlies, their backgrounds be so cute. They're, they'd be so cute. But you know what I've learned? And maybe this Zero is just my aesthetic. Yeah, I I actually like a more how do you say rustic look. Like yeah. I I like a little bit of mess in the back of a video. Yeah, because it does make you feel like oh I'm on Facetime with this person. That's like true. when something is too aesthetically pleasing, I scroll because I think it's an ad. That's true. Me actually, personally. no, that's real. That's real because I I don't ever I don't think I'm like. I don't think I'm a fashion girl in the sense where I try to be perfect because I'm most right. definitely a roundabout way. I think rustic is a perfect. Yeah. Like, I think that I think I can pull it together. Yes. I'm quirky. I yes. like yeah. I can be a little awkward. Like because yeah, there's a story there yeah. when when you're not all together. But it's it's some of those like very aesthetically pleasing Instagrams. I'm like this isn't attainable. Like but that's what I'm saying. I'm I can't do. You. I can't edit it myself because I'd be judging myself. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, how do I like get past you, that to then post the content? This is our friends. Like, we, we we feel that way so many times from the imposter syndrome yes. to her, like I'm like, this just isn't good enough. But y'all turn y'all's content out like it something that I love that you do is like the things that you you put stuff on your Insta story and then you turn it into a video. I'm like that's so smart. Like, why can't I do that? The other thing is, uh, <laughs> I I will edit videos for Amber so that she <laughs> she can kill the judge in her head. You know, like yeah. kill the judge in your head. Great uh, improvise improvise teacher McNapier talks about killing the judge in your head and just perform mm. and just do it because you'll be able to have rounds again at a different moment. Yeah. And so when Amber's sort of you know judging herself in any sort of creative artistic endeavor, I I I take the reins. I'll edit or just say just do it. Just do it. Or like she we sat down and she went through a whole stand up bit with me recently and I was just laughing. I was like this is good and then this I don't like. So let's let's yeah. workshop it. So you I think like just having a I think I'm going to. I just, I, a little bit. We'll just see. a little bit. We'll That's see. See, but see, I, I'm doing the judgment of like, well, if it's not so good, it's bad. Well, are you like, trying? Are you like it needs to be comedy special good? Like you need your one hour? No, just yes, th that's how I think. That's how I create. <laughs> no, she she can. Like, if it ain't iconic, I, I think to be she's up gonna there. get ten solid minutes. That would be part of like a you know a twenty five dollar ticket yeah. at a UCB night where they host you know four, um, comp like comics. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. You could easily terrain, do that because I have not really. I've done stand up like one time in. Is UCB like Groundlings? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Upright Citizens Brigades. There's yeah. used to be Whereas I knew Chicago. And... Yeah. I, I knew I knew who I could text or like what time. Well, you only knew were... Chicago because you actually took the chance to actually find out who yeah. Right, yeah. right. So and that's took... why it's scary. Yeah. You know how it goes when it's scary. No, I feel that. I feel that. I, I think I the bar with that. The, the bar's scary, a little bit lower. Can I ask Ryan about something real quick? Yeah. I want to hear about this dating. So good? I want to hear about dating in LA. This, this episode is great. <laughs> it's great. Dating? Yes. Yeah. I mean, dating is so difficult because, I mean, I think when you are a fat person 
and and you're also black and you did you are you exist in these different intersections and you're queer especially in a superficial town like Los Angeles where it's known for let's I mean when people think of Los Angeles they think of WeHo and that um, automatically is like you have to be a six foot white gay with abs like that is not me like like me Right. Um, <laughs> and like it's abs. Six, abs, abs. I was talking about the abs part. <laughs> Sorry. And so like it's one of those things where I dating for me has always been so interesting because out here, I think on top of having the my life being kind of public in some ways, it it's could be hard to find that person that you like who's actually going to be like okay I can stand next to Ryan and feel like I'm completely confident I I'm owning the space just as much as he is and yeah I mean yeah because they need to be able to work the room with you yeah in their, you're not gonna find someone way. who can own the space the way you can yeah, yeah. let's be real no but I do know? Need, yeah I, no, I, I but I get need what you someone mean. who can like be confident and be like understanding like this is just the work and like when I'm at home I'm like I'm a complete to be honest I'm such an introvert like I know how to turn it on when I need to but I'm a homebody all the way like I'm just not as like extrovert as one would think because I'm an only child I, I was able to exist by myself and so I think a lot of times I've run into cases where I've like dated guys and I've had guys tell me that they were like kind of overwhelmed by like the fact that I was like doing mm. like interviewing really cool celebrities or they it would reflect onto them like well why am I not doing cool things or whatever and like because you're not I'm, Ryan <laughs> I, I mean but it's it's one of those things where yeah. it's like it can be frustrating being told like you are all these wonderful things, but you're just not enough. Mm. And Dang. I think that, Ugh. I mean, that can be, that can be difficult. I mean, as far as like body wise, I mean, with even checking my own internalized fat phobia, like I've been told on dating apps, like, oh my God, you're so gorgeous. Like you're, you have everything I want except for your weight. Uh, People have said that to you. Oh my god! Fucking Literally, awful. just the other day, yeah. I had a, some shocked. random person was like, That's um, like said something about me, like needing to get into the gym. And I was like. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Like, it, I mean, people on the... <laughs> that's the thing. I'm so, like, when you are doing the work that we do, we are... We kind of open ourselves up for all types of, oh, like, Of course, anything. but... But, it, like, it's... Yeah, it can be hard horrible. out here. You know what I mean? It can be hard out here. But I also feel like... I am talking... Well, I'm, I'm kind of, like, in, like, you know, interacting with someone right now, but... Mm. We'll see. How long we'll have see. you been interacting? I met him on my birthday, but I'm not about to talk about him because, like, who knows? Oh, no, no, no. We won't. <laughs> we won't. And, you, know, and, and you, know, you never know when this drops. You'll be like, Ew. girl, <laughs> cut, cut that Fuck segment. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's exactly what I did for my birthday. I cut somebody out of the birthday video that's on my Instagram <laughs> that show like, that was, like, there. But because we ended it on my birthday, I literally was like, hey, friend, could you edit him out? And yes. literally, he is nowhere that's in the video. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm that's mad at Mr. <laughs> Your birthday. That's Wait, why did we miss your birthday? Y'all were out again? of town because of uh, we a, were funeral. a funeral. Yeah, yeah, you we were at a funeral. funeral. But okay. we would have been there. We would have been there. Well, Ryan, I still think that we are going to defer to Ryan as we answer to relationship advice. Say, can we answers. not end on me talking about people hating no. my body? I hate. I hate <laughs> that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, we gotta wrap it up they're, here. They're just literally projecting. No, but I think that's something that fat people like yeah. deal of with. Course. In in our work, I mean, the way society views fat bodies is a whole. The, also, one of the driving forces of why I dress the way I do. Like my mm. style is literally a protest to show people that fat bodies can exist in all these spaces, and we can yeah. look fucking fabulous doing it. Like I've, there are so many Pride people that. Yes think that we are not deserving i mean you see it in a as a consumer where oh, you have to pay a fat tax to find a brand who is size inclusive and i'm now i'm paying three or four hundred dollars to for a pair of pants because mm -hmm. guess what this brand i want to support and make sure that they can continue to do this work because they're creating stylish size inclusive clothes that's something that i'm willing to do but not everyone has that privilege i'm privileged mm -hmm. in the way to be able to do that and so like i all my work in in fashion and wanting to exist in in the way that i do it's because I'm I'm proving to people that I can be the size that I am and, and be the baddest bitch in the room mm. and love myself automatically, even if I wake up tomorrow hating like my side view or hating yeah. like the fact yeah. that I've been they ain't working gotta know out. About that. Yeah, you know, they don't like, have to know about my I mean, meltdown but, on Thursday night. But it's I mean it. But it's honestly it, I'm, get, I'm getting to the point that it is okay for them to know about it because I I think a lot of times 
people on, could look at me online and be like, oh my God, Ryan's so cool and doing all these things. But I'd be like, girl, but you don't know. Like literally yesterday, I was like freaking out because Stop I it. stepped on the scale for the first time and it did not mm -hmm. move. And I've been working out four times a week and drinking protein shakes and shit's not happening. Yes. So it's like all and you these... want to just fall back into like, <laughs> I need to just hit the ramen shop again yes. because I've been eating protein bars for the past two <laughs> months. Yeah. And so like, that, I think for me, like, Fat being called fat or fatness is not a bad word to, to me anymore. Like it's it's who I am because guess what? It's a part of my intersectional identity. I walk in the room being a fat black queer person, and it informs every piece of how I live in my life. Yeah, and I, I think that's a power. That's not any type of deficit. It's yeah. not. It's not. So I mean, fuck it. There though, there are plenty of men who want me. Trust me. Trust. Yeah. But I hate men. You're the worst. <laughs> I you don't want me, man. It's about time you said it. Yeah. Oh, should I? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Not him for saying that. I, Hold I, on. I, 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 I think you're I quite attractive. Oh, you are quite man. attractive. Uh, yeah, no, it's so funny. Uh, <laughs> Caleb Heron, who's a fat comedian, he uses the word fat in his comedy. And it's he just he has a way of just pre presenting his fat body in within a co comedic context as like an asset. Like, no, this is something to be proud of. Yeah. Um, we, you know, there's another uh, great comedian, um, the woman who makes fun of men all the time. She's so funny. Uh, what's on TikTok? What's Drew? her? Drew. Yeah, Drew Afuelo. Oh, yeah, She's so Drew. funny. She gets called fat all all the time she's like that's that's an adjective you're not hurting me calling me fat yeah. you know what i mean like this is just a reality like it, i mean it probably hurt like, me okay. when i was in third so grade you're, so you're skinny there. what now <laughs> yeah Where's what now talent right what, look at the outfit right so, what, so, so you're skinny you win that's the thing a lot of the girls be relying on their body and they'd be like girl okay what else what else is new and Tell also skinny different. can be really unhealthy it, it most, literally yeah. uh my mom introduced me to this uh, brother like, and sister who, who you calling out now? uh my mom <laughs> No, my this uh, brother and sister a musician, the Carpenters, were listening to their music. My mom was like, "Yeah, she she died starving herself from anorexia. She was a." Uh, and I was like, "Those are the times when I'm saying to myself, like, okay, so everybody kind of does." Yeah, it everybody. Yeah, yeah. everybody kind of. There's no, there's no medium. Um, well, when you're constantly looking at yourself, I mean, we live in our bodies. We're constantly looking at ourselves, and then you'll see yourself on camera and yes. things like that. You're like, oh, oh my god, yes. yeah. <laughs> Just even in last week's episode, I was like. I am like my body is eating this jumpsuit. Yeah, like, like it was just like crumpled up. Well, that's I was why like, I... this is not. Important. And you stood up, and your uh, vagina sweat had stained the back of your dress, and it was so cute. It was like, why would he say? But that is, but to reel it in, that is why I loved why your documentary so much because I thought it was so powerful to hear you express those moments where you, you were shopping you were like i don't feel like this is mm. my body right and yes like, i think that I'm is supposed to feel I've beautiful never, right now i've never I'm, I'm i'm you know i don't have a womb i can't have kids but I, there was something about going i haven't shopped in a store in like decades right like i don't mm. i i only do online shopping or like you know i get something custom like mm. but like hearing you say that and hearing that emotion there was something i automatically connected to um and i felt was so honest and beautiful for you to like showcase that to the world because it's such a moment where people don't understand that the, those moments where you really don't feel like oh my god like i hate my body and then also going into a store means the world hates my body too because mm. i can't yes. even find my size it reinforces you know i saw this really great um clip of james baldwin talking oh. about how we become collaborators in our own self-hate yeah it's like you grow up and the world hates you because you're you're black or you're fat or you're queer and eventually you become a collaborator in that self-hate yeah. you just do the same thing to yourself and so to wake up in protest and own a room and take up space is daily stopping that collaborator element of yourself which and it sucks because we've been a self-hating collaborator for so long. Yeah. So we just have to one day reach the point where we're like, okay, I will not collaborate <laughs> in beating myself up today. Ooh. Like it's enough people beating me up. I can't. And I also want to do a job going back to our parents, not sharing a lot. I really want to do a job with wild of being like, mommy kind of hates her body today. Mm. This is something that you will one day experience. It, it don't have to be like yeah. that corny, but I yeah. think we kind of grew up with our parents being like, you're so perfect. You never yeah, have a bad day, huh? Yes. You just every day, like it, and anytime you complain about something, it's like, you ain't depressed. Just go in there and pray. You yeah. ain't this, you ain't that. So we learned to sort of like, okay, well I'm, I'm the only person in the world masturbating. Cause I was just called gross yeah. for doing this thing. So let me stop it. And, 
one day your parents just like, yeah, I was I was sad about that. Too. I remember one time my mom was like, you see that old house that we were in? Like, that was my favorite corner to cry in. And I remember thinking like, I never you saw you secret. cry growing up. Ooh. Why were you hiding? Not that she needed to cry around us every day. But, but yeah, I'm like, why, why are you, are you hiding, hiding your emotions Especially from me? as adults and we start to understand. Like, my mom had me when she was 23. I could not imagine having right. a child at 23, right? Like, there's just so many things where I'm like, I there's a lot that I don't know about my mom's past because she still looks at me as like this little kid and she wants to shield and protect me. And like, that for me is like, well, I don't want to miss out on that one familial history. And then two, your experience of being being an adult like I want to know and learn and and hear that because like you know I think about y'all like wild is so lucky to have y'all as parents like I hope y'all truly understand that because the way that I see you navigate with her and like you Mm -hmm. you're you're raising her it's just one of those things where it's like a lot of people probably watching including me are being like damn I wish our parents could like have done the same thing right like we're literally taking those tools and that and the lessons that we've learned, unfortunately, and like you're doing such a better job. Like y'all are really nailing. It. Well, if so. your if your mom had a friend like you growing up, she probably would have been a better parent too. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So cheers to you. In ah. your uh, all right. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan comes hangs out with us. Comes over to our house. He's pretty yes. great, and he has some good relationship <laughs> advice. So you're about oh, to you're about to uh, yes, get us back. <laughs> we got two uh, letters. Here, we got guys. two letters. <laughs> I'm going to let you answer first. I don't care. I feel like you can answer. Um, here it goes. Hey, Fly on the Wildin. When do you tell a person... This is actually a great pivot. When do you tell a person you've been dating about your past? Mm. I've been dating someone for seven and a half months. He's showing signs of being more serious. We spend a lot of quality time together. He also has friendships with my kids. He says he wants to get to know me more and know everything about me before he jumps into a relationship with me. And I feel like we do all the relationship things now, but I struggle knowing what parts I should share. I'm in early adulthood and I've dealt with mental illness, unstable relationships, past drug use and trauma. Mm -hmm. These are things I feel somewhat shameful about and I've been working hard to get through. And beyond that fear of being judged, I've been working hard to get through that fear of being judged um, because I know that these things have been often stigmatized. Mm. So when would you maybe talk to someone about mental illness, past drug use, trauma, if you were, or, or is it relevant to even talk about it? Well, that's actually so interesting. I mean, I hate to bring things back to my mom, but I think when I was around my friends and things like that, and I was experiencing certain levels of like my mom's mental health that I was like a nervous to like talk to mm. anyone about. I was like hiding it. I would like walk out of rooms because I saw my mom was calling, but I wasn't sure what vibe I was about to get. And so I was oh, hiding, I was hiding so much about like my personal life. And I think, when I started to realize who my actual like close friends were and like my best friends, I was like, I want to open up to them about it so they kind of have context about how it informs me. And I think it's something that you know, like, right? It's something that if you are really trying to make a life with this person and you're saying, I want them to see every bit of me, that worry about the shame and the judgment kind of goes away because there's some trust, there's you're going to trust that they one respond to you in a in a way in an empathic way and they're going to just like listen to you and not judge you right and i think it doesn't have to be immediately but i mean she says she knew she's introduced to the kids to, him. to the kids mm-hmm. already he has, he has friendships with the kids they've been dating seven and a half months i mean it seems like if you're introducing kids it seems like you already trust him a ton right, right. like talk to him yeah I think, yeah, for me, it comes up when the thing becomes relevant, right? Mm. So if there's a mental illness, you have a, a revolving around a certain le- trigger and you're going to be in in, that, in a situation where that trigger might come up, then then I would talk to him about that trigger as it's going. Or like if there's certain like environments that might, um, you know, bring you back to the moment when you were involved in your drug use, then I would say mention about that environment. Like, hey, I have a past about this environment or this certain city or whatever. Like yeah. when it becomes relevant, bringing it up uh, for sure. It sounds like you could yeah. do it like little by little, but yeah. laying it all down. And one setting, hard. I mean, depending on what the moment is, like in one setting, it might be a lot to carry for it. Like, you know, you don't want to um, like trauma, like just yeah. through, yeah. trauma vomit. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to trauma about the relevant thing because oh. I 
I, I I personally, I think Ben does a good job of sharing with things with people when they become relevant. But I'm kind of not like that. Like, for example, I remember coming out to my mother as bisexual mm-hmm. after we were already married. And so I remember thinking, like, what well, is this relevant right now? Okay. No. But there's a part of you that's just like, you're right. I feel like I cannot fully be myself if I don't share this information with you. So I think... Like, like you said, mm-hmm. and, and I think you should also frame it like, hey, I'm about to talk to you about some really hard stuff that I'm, I'm nervous yeah. that you're going to judge me for. But I'm trusting that we've had such a great relationship together thus far. I'm trusting that you will accept me. With that being said, blank, because it's kind of hard to be like, wait, what? Like, yeah, because I think there's um, there's going to be moments where I'm like. I'm pretty sure your partner already knows that they don't know everything about you, right? right. I, I've learned that people, they know when you're holding back, when you, yes. you're covering it all up and you're like, oh, Everything's yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. People see right yeah. through that, which shakes me at my core because <laughs> I'm a girl that when I step out the door, I'm put together. You don't know. <laughs> and so it's, it shakes. It like, it's like, oh, wait, y'all know I had an awful day. Y'all like, clocked me, right? Yeah, you clocked yes. my tea. Like, relax. Yes. And so I think, he probably that person already probably knows, right? And so like something's up. They're just waiting for you to 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 feel safe and comfortable enough for them to tell you. And I think also if they don't take it the right way, I think this is a it's unfortunately going to be really hard to to experience like if they react off of awfully to it. But like I also believe that that's not the end all be all, right? Yes. Like there's going to be someone there that will actually accept and hear your story and, and also just trust. That's literally what trust is. Uh, Trusting that they're going to hold on to you in that moment. So we're giving you our blessing. Tell them sooner rather than later yeah. and just trust that this person is going to accept you, yeah. if you if you've been seeing a genuine person thus far. Trust. That was a great letter. We got another one here. You ready? Ooh. Now. Try to keep... We're, we're running out of time. So I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm really fast. Oh, are we yeah, running out of time? Yeah. That's okay. We got this. <laughs> Dear Fly on the Wallen, I'm a black woman newly dating a white man for only a couple months. The relationship has been good so far. He's 10 years older than me. So emotionally mature. He's witty, charming, such a little cutie. And I like spending time with him. We meld well. We're medium distance, so we talk on the phone a lot. When we're together, he doesn't really say much, which gives me pause. But microaggressions do pop up casually in our phone conversations. Mm. It's always little things like him accept obsessing over our contrasting skin colors. He once told me he wasn't good at picking out colors for beautiful ebony women. And I don't think anything of it until I say it out loud. It's giving fetish a little bit, but I think he's redeemable, though I'm not sure. How do I have conversations about these microaggressions? Where do I start? Well, the best white man in the world. I'm going to let you take this one. Oh, (laughs) Well, that line I've definitely used on Amber a couple of times. So. What line? <laughs> Beautiful Ebony. <laughs> <I don't laughs> it, calling a black woman Ebony is just like, Ebony, you just heard oh this in porn. Oh, God. Ebony porn. is crazy. That's yeah. What oh, like, man. Like, we just um, porn before we got up here. I, I think, th- for me, it sounds like this person needs a mind shift. Uh, literally a D, almost like a deprogramming of sorts. To, because that kind of language sounds like so rooted in um, his obsession with like, being open-minded you know some people love this idea of being open-minded he's like look at me i got my I, new black girl yeah, yeah it I'm sounds push, like he, yeah. the status he, quo. he might be in love with the idea of you instead of the actual you so just be wary of that mm. i find that happening a lot with uh especially with my my kind of people they'll like date an asian person or and they'll be like obsessed with this idea of the person instead of especially the Which cultural idea rooted in I think it's uh, rooted in this desire to conquer mm. or to uh, like assimilate. Yeah, I think it's, there's a level of social colonialism involved in it. Um, I, I you mean, think he's redeemable. Not for her. I've, maybe, if maybe, he works maybe, on himself and down the line, maybe, you know? maybe <laughs> if you bring it up to him and then break up with him, maybe the next black woman he dates might be a better Ooh, relationship. I don't. This high. is. I say bring it up to he, him. That's you bring like it a up. Bad Jeremy O'Hara's play, slave play like that. <laughs> I don't even want that to be anywhere near me. I think for me, like I've dated white guys before, and it's always been, um, it's always been fine. Like I've, I've never felt like I had to like educate them. I yeah. never felt like they didn't push like the fact like if they didn't understand like if they didn't understand something like I was able to like 
explain it to them because and I it was worth to. it too yes. right right I didn't feel like I didn't feel like they were treating it as like this big interracial couple thing but I do there's so much conflict and discourse around like you know black gay men and dating outside their race and black love and what that really looks like especially if you're a public figure here in Hollywood like it complicates it right but for me like there's so many red flags in that letter that I would have to actually be like oh I don't know if this is for me right like and I would assume if she just likes someone else, maybe she'll find another white man who is like not using the term ebony and it'll be just fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> but for that seems like a him issue yeah. versus a her issue and she should run away. Yeah. I do want to say that I if if you're a, a white person out there and you're dating a person of color long term or short term or otherwise, you're there is going to be a time where you mess up and say For something sure. ridiculous. Um I mean there there are limits to like, okay, that well that was too ridiculous, yeah. but like in the levels of racism, like you might think you on level eight, but you could jump through a hole yeah. and you back at level one. Yeah. And I want you I want to say that if your black partner or your partner is a person of color and they choose to address this calmly, you need to listen to them. Yeah. Because any let's say I've I've had a microaggression from a white woman at the workplace. Oh. I just never spoke to that person again ever. Mm. And they are just out there floating, probably offending other people. So the if if you're a white person and I took the time to explain to you why what you said was messed up, listen. You kind of need to yeah, receive. I, I think sort of yeah, and white people their default setting is racist. You know what I mean? And so it's fact, sort of factory setting. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I agree. yeah, I agree like with they're that. Yeah. you know, difficulty setting racist. Uh, and so you have to, and and the good ones, the good whites, are going to hear uh, that and be able to say, "Oh, I can readjust, or I can, you know, understand." So maybe I maybe bring it up with him, uh, but that that line you is ooh, that is. I mean, if she feels like it, this relationship is worth it. I just, I'm. It's not even just that line, but it's also like when they're in person, he doesn't really speak much. Mm. Like it just is like, well, then what is what why is there brings us together? On the phone, yeah, which yeah. Not why is there a navigating here? life with me? Which is ultimately the yeah. point. Yeah, it's mm. just I think there's other red flags that she should be aware of, and then combined together with yeah, it I just see. Is a big no. Yeah, it's a no for us. Very American sorry. Break up. Talent X. <laughs> Boom. All right. Well, the the. Last Last segment of our show is Shelfie. Yeah, give us one thing you're reading right now. And <gasps> ooh, uh, yeah. Well, I know that part article. of part of your thing is that you you told me once you're like, yeah, I have to buy all the subscriptions for every single television thing, <laughs> everything, and watch basically everything. If I'm interviewing or yes. talking, like I got to watch this or that movie. Yes. Uh, so do, do you? What are you doing for fun for yourself, though? Oh, like I mean, a, I to, if I'm being quite honest. I have the a blast watching television. Like I oh, yeah. even if, even though it's for work, you're just like, like I'm a latchkey kid at heart. Like TV raised me. Yes, it's some uh, ten, like nine times out of ten the reason why I moved out to Los Angeles. If mm. I'm being quite honest, so for me, like I, there are moments that I do feel like a little drained by watching it because I'm like always like kind of critically thinking about it, but. Then I'll just play video games. Like, I'm, like, kind of obsessed with playing Fortnite right now. That's awesome. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> like, I'm a secret gamer. Uh, right, on PS5, Xbox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. PS5. I'm a, Do you have a Switch? You have I, a... I want to get a Switch, and I also... Ha- Thank you so much for bringing up the Switch yeah. thing. I know we're running out of time. You tried it with that Switch thing. Thank you. You tried... was. You, I was Ryan. in the shower, and when I was listening to the episode, was like, now, why would you buy a Switch and then, like, make it like it was a gift for her? I would have also equally been upset. But I just... I just think I meant to bring that up earlier, but thank you so much for bringing that. Wow, up. as the gamer, you decide to go to the non-gamer <laughs> side, which is fine. Well, exactly. Yeah, you're supposed to be the greatest white man of all time. You had, yeah. I guess, you have more of a an unbiased like, opinion whoa. now. Yeah, I was no, but I no. Mean, what I did was sick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get do it. want to switch though and I, I do I'm I'm low key a gamer for sure so gaming is like a fun hobby moment what I'm reading is um, actually I'm going to plug of new friends well friends book please um, you, you already know Travell Anderson and then uh, Jared Hill they have a new book called Historically Black Phrases where it's a, a coffee table book great like Christmas gift birthday gift that you can buy that literally has like they examine there's essays about black culture and black, black lingo, uh, lingo from like if you know you know to um, like the devil you know you ain't got time for that type of things like they're each page mm. is a historically black phrase that is like from the church from like family like all these different things and they examine it through this really beautiful lens of 
like just black language. That is an important um, book. And it's one of the, it's like the best thing I, and I literally just got my copy today. And Yay! so I was like, okay, I'm going to plug this them. In yes, the episode yes, it's awesome. super great. Uh, love Jerry Travail. Hill, Travail Anderson, Historically Black Phrases. Check it out. It's coming out. Awesome. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so, so much every, for Thank you for being in here with us today. Oh, thank you. This Bye. was, I just, I'm reminded every time we spend time together, how obsessed I am with you <laughs> and how powerful of a person you. you are. And I, I'm so grateful that we're here together. You too, Ben. Yeah. But I'm so grateful that we're here together in this space. I think it affirms how we have really good judgment on picking friends. I agree. So, yeah. I agree. Y'all did a great job when you picked me. <laughs> Uh, and thank y'all and, and to the friends at home that are listening thank you so much for listening to another episode of Fly on the Wallin this is your outro music bye y'all you know they're from TikTok cause those laughs keep you coming cause they're wildin all the time before wild throws a tantrum listen to our silly anthem cause they're wild